We're back and hopefully you are too. All right, for every available job in this country right now, as we speak, there are five or six people looking for a job. Almost half of all unemployed people have been employed for at least six months. That's double what it was last year. And then there are people who have been unemployed for so long, 99 weeks or more, their benefits have run out. There are about a million and a half such Americans, enough to warrant their very own name, the 99ers. Now, the unemployed are not a natural political constituency. For one thing, we're talking about a transient group. Once you get a job, you are by definition no longer unemployed. For those suffering long-term unemployment, there's always been the specter of shame. No one wants to scream at the top of their lungs about something they find humiliating. But now, with this recession, you just have so many people unemployed for so very long, which makes it a more stable group. Also, very importantly, you have the internet. A man in Rochester, Rochester, New York, started layoff list two years ago. He writes about unemployment news, links to state unemployment offices, and relevant government websites. He posts legislators' contact information so people can advocate for more and better unemployment benefits. The AFL-CIO set up Unemployment Lifeline, where you can organize, learn about your rights and benefits, and find resources available to you in your community. Another union also set up its own network called U-Cubed. It organizes groups of unemployed people by region, the theory being that there is political strength in numbers. Karl Rove set out to win the 2004 presidential election by increasing the number of evangelical voters by 4 million. There are about 15 million unemployed people in this country. If just a fraction of them were well organized and politically active... Imagine how the 2010 midterm election might go for the party whose members have referred to out-of-work Americans as, quote, hobos, on the dole, spoiled, and lazy. Joining us now is Annie Lowry, reporter for The Washington Independent. Annie, great to see you. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. I read your piece today. I I said, darn, I wish I had written that. It was really (laughs) excellent. Um, (laughs) Thank you. How effective, I, I guess that's the first question, right, is like how effective are these online efforts to organize unemployed people? Well, you know, thus far they've they've just started. This is a nascent movement. It's about it's been about six months or a year that uh, this thing called that I call the unemployed net roots has even been in existence since the unemployment rate really started tracking up precipitously. And now these people that the unemployment benefits extension uh, battle in Congress is over. You know, all these people are still online and they're looking to the midterms and they're recognizing that they have a lot of political power and they're starting to wield it. Uh, so, you know, we don't know. This is going to be a question going forward. But all of a sudden, they've sort of realized that they're a political constituency and they're starting to demand things from people who are running for office or who are representing them. When you say when they say when you say they started to wield it, are, are there actual instances of the thing, the activities that are going on online tr- translating into actual sort of political effectiveness on Capitol Hill? Hill. So, you know, it's just starting to is the really interesting thing. So when legislators go home for the August recess, unemployed people are going to go to their campaign rallies and ask them questions about this. And they're doing it with union backing. So the AFL-CIO's Working America and U-Cubed are organizing people online and saying, hey, let's go to some rallies. You know, they're sort of taking a page out of the Tea Partier's book out of all things. And, and, and they're sort of demanding answers from these people. They've also been very successful at deluging offices with calls and faxes and emails. And, uh, and, and they've been very successful in that. And, you know, it's just this big question moving forward. If all of these millions of people are connecting online, what kind of effect they might have? I thought it was really interesting. There was one guy you talked to in the article who said he'd been a lifelong Republican and, mm-hmm. and was sort of, this was this kind of radicalizing moment. And, you know, I, I think I know people I've interviewed who are unemployed. You know, this is not... It's not a a demographic of people that you can sort of easily make generalizations about, but there's a lot of people who are used to being politically effective, who are used to a certain professional lifestyle, who have credentials, and they're, they're used to having a certain amount of say over their lives, and they've had this kind of radicalizing effect. I wonder how much that's kind of driving the organizing you're seeing. Yeah, I think it absolutely is. Uh, You know, so there was an eight-month battle for the unemployment extensions in Congress and specifically in the Senate. And you had, you know, senators like Jim Bunning standing up and saying, I, the single senator, am going to stop this from moving forward. And I think that the the, the unemployed really didn't understand. You know, it was just weeks ago, it was last week even, that that congressional inaction led to 2.6 million people losing extended unemployment, unemployment benefits that they had expected to get. And so, yeah, the guy I spoke with in the 
article, he doesn't want to vote for Harry Reid, but he will because <laughs> Sharon Engel called him spoiled and said that his benefits needed to be cut and that was why he was unemployed. And you know, that doesn't ring true for him and that doesn't ring true for millions of Americans who are in the same, you know, circumstance. And, and notably, you know, there's about 14 and a half million people who are currently unemployed, but over the course of the recession, there's been about 30 million Americans who've experienced a period of joblessness. I wonder also, ultimately, if, 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 if the Republican Party has sort of misjudged this constituency as well. I mean, I wonder, or, 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 or lack of constituency in the past. I mean, it seems like it's, you can, you know, there's been the Reagan dumping on the welfare queens and this idea that you can sort of safely attack people on the dole. But when those people are brother-in-laws and uncles and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, your substitute teacher that you remember from the neighborhood, you know, it becomes much more politically dangerous. Yeah, absolutely. And another place where you're seeing this is, uh, you know, it was yesterday, uh, a National Federation of States said that local governments are going to lay off maybe 500,000 public employees. And we're talking police officers and teachers and right. firefighters. And, you know, it's, it's again because of congressional inaction. So, you know, joblessness is, is so spread throughout the economy um, and it's such a present problem that, you know, and like you mentioned, with, with five job seekers looking for every job and, you know, in states like Michigan or Nevada, something like 10 or 20 job seekers looking for every job. It's hard to describe these people as, as lazy, spoiled, you know, people on the dole. Annie Lowry, reporter for the Washington Independent. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Really enjoyed it. Thank you for having me.